Well, good morning, church. So glad that we could be together today to worship and praise. Come on, let's just get, get up on your feet wherever you are. Come on. Doesn't matter where you are. Make that place a sanctuary. Jesus is worthy to be praised this morning. Oh, you good God. Declare this together. Let praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are and we claim your victory. Let it rise. Let praise arise. Come on. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. For fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. He who made every living thing 
behold him he who heard humanity's cry left his throne to wake as a child he became like the least of us behold him jesus son of god messiah And behold Him. We behold Him, Lord. Oh. He who died with sinners and saints, healed the blind, the lost, and the lame. Even now He's in our midst. Behold.
that you are king of all kings, that you are Lord of all lords, that you are on the throne. And we praise and worship you this morning, Father. God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, we thank you that all three are one and that by your power you reside within your church. God, we give you praise this morning. We ask for you to speak to us today and have your way in this service. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Church, we love you. We're praying for you, believing that the best is yet to come. Why don't you have a great time throughout the rest of this day. Amen. Hey, GT Church family. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, if it's your first time, uh, man, we welcome you. And if you've been with us for some time, we welcome you back. Uh, we often say, take a moment, uh, if you would, and please fill out the Connect card. Uh, it's always on the GT Church app. Uh, and it's certainly there on the on your screen on the link below. So make sure you just take a second, give us your updated information so that we can uh, make you aware of uh, updates that are happening here at GT Church. Um, also to our parents, man, we welcome you. Thank you for joining us. It's been a challenging year for sure, um, but we want to encourage you again to uh, access all the resources that are available uh, on the websites for both GT Kids and GT Student Ministries. 
Uh, so make sure you check those out and just uh, keep your family uh, encouraged in the Lord and uh, growing together in Christ. So we look forward to you doing that. Um, boy, the Simply uh, Peace Light experience has been just a great uh, outreach for our community. You know, we've said it for a number of years now, we love Burks, and this is our, uh, our community, and we wanted to bring the light of Jesus and the joy and the gospel message to Burks County. Uh, so it's still available every night, um, starting at six o'clock. You can drive through it, just have a moment of peace to, you know, just be reminded of God's great love for us. I've had a number of um, my neighbors here in my community that have gone through it. Um, some that don't know God, but have really been blessed by it. And it's opened up conversations with them. So make sure you check it out. A big thank you to uh, our volunteers, uh, staff, everyone, even the anonymous donor who gave us the gift to allow us to do this uh, reach to our community. Uh, we had this past weekend over 400 cars come through um, the experience and the cars filled with kids. Kids were just excited. You could tell, thrilled to be there, the cocoa and the, uh, you know, the cookies and, and more importantly, the, the gospel message that people got to see. Uh, even as people were leaving, they just were expressing their gratitude to GT for doing this for our community. So I just want to give a big shout out and thank you to all of you who made uh, that outreach um, such a possibility. Uh, you know, and that's our, our prayer. We want to continue that into 2021. And uh, speaking of the year 2021, um, hard to believe, but that's coming up fast. We're going to hear a great word from Pastor Eric today as he's wrapping up the Simply Peace um, series. But uh, next week on January 4th, I'll be kicking off uh, a new series for us that we've entitled Perspective. And, um, you know, God has given every one of us a unique story. And uh, he wants to use that in our lives in a powerful way and certainly in the lives of others. And so we are kicking off this series next week uh, called Perspective. And, and really the, the bottom line for the entire series is that when our story connects to God's story, it leads to a greater story. And so that's what we're going to be talking about. And, you know, it may be possible you're saying, well, Brian, you know what? I, my story is not significant. In fact, you know, I've had so many failures in the past and even the disappointments right now and the uncertainty of the future. But, but listen, that's why we need God's perspective. And the word is full of uh, teaching and understanding of how God's story, um, you know, wants to bring encouragement to us and that he can change our lives. So we are really looking forward uh, to being, um, to starting that series next week. So hopefully you can tune in next week. And join us, and uh, we look forward to that so much. Also with that, uh, our mission obviously is reaching people and growing together in Christ, which we talked a little bit about in this break. And uh, we want to really encourage you to stay connected in community. Uh, we have on Wednesday nights our Growing Together watch parties. And uh, for more information, you can always check out our website. Uh, but join us on a Wednesday night. We get together, whoever was the communicator the previous week from the teaching team. We just dig a little deeper. We have a conversation. Then we break into some small groups. And we just talk about uh, how the Word of God has spoken to us and challenging us to be um, greater Christ followers. So uh, hopefully you will join us uh, for that. That will begin on January 6th. So we look forward to seeing you there. Uh, we're going to get ready to give. And uh, GT, I just want to say as your pastor, thank you for your faithful giving in 2020. I know it's been a challenging year in so many ways, and certainly financially for many. And so I just want to say thank you for your faithful giving of your tithes, your offerings. It's what the Bible encourages us to do. And Jesus talks a lot about our giving. And um, in fact, I want to share with you, there's a parable. I love the parables. Uh, there's the parable of the three servants, and uh, you can take some time to read it if you want later, but it's in Matthew 25. And it's just simply, it's a story this way, where, where Jesus is talking about the kingdom, and he's talking about the story. It's a parable, and he says this. There was a, a guy who was going on a long trip, and so he called his servants together, and he said, uh, I want, I'm entrusting you, and that's literally what it says in Matthew, I'm entrusting you with my money. And he gives one of the servants five bags of silver, another two bags, and another he gave one single bag. And so the Bible says he entrusted them with his money. And when he came back, 
um, you know, he, he talks to them about what he gave them in regard to their money. Jesus talks a lot about it. And the one he gave five, he invested it and made five more. The other took two and invested it and made two more. The other, the third guy buried it in the ground out of fear, out of, he didn't want to uh, use what God had entrusted him with. And uh, that's what our giving is all about. We've been blessed. We live in a, a great country. God's blessed us. I know it's maybe been challenging in some ways, but we have all been blessed by God. And God has entrusted us uh, with incredible resources. And so the last verse there, one of the last verses in Matthew 25, he says this, to those, Matthew 25, 29, to those who use well what they are given, even more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who do nothing, um, even what little they have will be taken away. And so it doesn't matter the amount of money we have. It matters how faithful we are with what God has entrusted us with. And so thank you for being faithful. I want to say thank you to those of you who've done that. Uh, let's continue to do that, even as we think about this year wrapping up. Uh, I pray uh, God's blessing upon you as you give. And we're going to get ready to pray. Uh, we're going to pray for the message that Pastor Eric's going to bring. So pray with me, will you? Lord, we thank you today. Uh, we thank you, God, for the mission of GT Church. Thank you, God, for this year and for the opportunities, God, you've given us to reach people and also to grow together in Christ, God. And so many ministries, so many opportunities. And God, we know that that's provided for by your goodness, by the leading of your spirit, but also by the faithfulness of the giving of your people. And so, God, we give our tithes to you today. We give our offerings to you today, our project impact offerings, God. However we're giving today, God, we ask you to bless it and multiply it and use it, God. We want to take what you've given us and we want to use it well. And so, God, I pray your blessing on our offering today. God, just open our ears and our hearts to hear today what the Spirit is saying through Pastor Eric, God. We, we just want your peace, and we pray, God, the word you've given him, God, would speak to us in a very powerful way. And we thank you for it, Lord, in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, church. Hey, good morning, church. Uh, I want to welcome you this morning to GT uh, from your living room, your family room, your bedroom, wherever you may be right now at home. But well, we thank you for joining us this morning, and I am super excited to be here to share uh, the last sermon of 2020 uh, with you this morning. But I'm, I'm going to stray off my notes already just, just for a few minutes uh, to share with you a God story, to share a quick story of God's faithfulness, of God's healing power during a very difficult time. I think right now a good friend of mine, if he's up, he's recovering from COVID-19 this morning, and the good news is he's recovering at home. He's recovering with his wife. He's been in the hospital over three weeks, all of December and some of November. And Chuck, if you're listening this morning, you watch this, you are a testament of God's grace and faithfulness. Chuck, we love you, we care for you, and we are thankful that God has touched your life. So I want everyone out there to know if you have been affected by this COVID-19, by this terrible virus, I want you to know as, as just one of the pastors of this church, we love you and we pray for you and we care about you. And if there's anything we can do to help you in this season of need, please reach out to us. But I am so excited. Maybe you saw the video on Facebook. Maybe you didn't, I'm not sure. But just a few days ago, uh, Chuck's family made a video of him being discharged from the hospital. And he had a long, hard battle. And I, my wife and I got to speak with him yesterday and pray with him. And his, his faithfulness and his testimony to what God has done, even while he was in the hospital, the moments he was able, 
He was witnessing to the nurses and telling them of God's goodness. Just a beautiful story. So I just wanted to share that with you this morning during this Christmas season. I hope you had an amazing Christmas. Uh, you were able to connect with some of your families. We know it was different. It was different for my family. But, you know, God's faithfulness and goodness never, never changes. So hope that's blessed you this morning. Let's get into the word this morning. Like I said, this is the last sermon of 2020, and I'm sure many of you right now may be saying, thank goodness, I've about had enough of 2020 and everything that's going on. I've, I've written a few things down here that we've all experienced in 2020. Um, it was the year that was filled with unending Zoom meetings, uh, sanitizing your hands until the first layer of skin came off, or maybe it was paying too much for toilet paper if you could even find it, or how about politics, how about pressure, how about quarantine, and I could go on and on, and can you believe I'm, I'm going to talk about peace today. But right now you may be feeling a little bit anxious just as I speak those different things to you. Well, God has given us a specific word on peace, and that's what I wanna talk about this morning. So as we go along, this is an interactive message, so feel free to join with the chat this morning. Maybe uh, type in where you're watching this from. Uh, maybe type in your best Christmas present you got. I know for Chuck, it's his health and God restoring him, but what is it for you? Or maybe type in that emoji of what 2020 has been like. Now keep it appropriate, this is church, all right? But this is interactive. So feel free to do that this morning. You know, one of the things that I found interesting about this crazy past year, this 2020, is I thought personally, I thought maybe, maybe being forced to slow down and work from home and having my kids home from school and having us all together as a family, just maybe we could experience some peace together. I was hopeful. I, I really was hopeful for this. I, I, I had these thoughts in my head and I had these hopes that, that we sit around together and as, as a family and, and it would just be amazing and, and we've never been able to have this time because life is so busy, but, but it didn't happen. In fact, what happened was it felt like life was moving at 100 miles an hour with twists and turns and speed bumps and even dead ends. But I was hopeful. But it was really, really hard to find peace and rest this past year. Think about those two words, peace and rest. Peace and rest. It's, it's like this perfect combination of, of chocolate and peanut butter. And you put them together and it makes this beautiful candy, maybe the, the most perfect candy ever made called a peanut butter cup. I mean, you just get this combination that works together. You put them together and it's, it's just amazing. And if only it were as easy as, as going to Target or Walmart and buying a big bag of peanut butter cups and, and feeling the peace and rest in your life. And wouldn't that be amazing? But it doesn't work like that. I tried it. It doesn't work like that. You get a little bit heavier and a little bit uncomfortable. It just doesn't work like that. So today, I believe God gave us the perfect recipe, the perfect directions, the perfect instructions that we can experience peace and rest. And so today, the title of my message is simple. It's called Check It or Wreck It. Check it or wreck it. Before we start, I just want to say a prayer. I want, I want to invite God and the Holy Spirit to come into your house, to fill your house, to speak to you what he has this morning. So let's pray. Jesus, help us to open our hearts to your word this morning. God, help us to listen. Help us to hear what you're going to say, knowing that you love us more than we ever know. Lord, we need your peace and we need your rest. So help us learn how to do that this morning through your Holy Spirit. Amen. 
All right, so the question is, where can I get this peace and rest? The first thing I wanna encourage you to do, if you haven't done this, if you haven't seen the first three sermons of this series, I want you to go to GT's uh, Facebook page or go to GT online and find these sermons and listen to them. And then I'm gonna wrap up with this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish this series with a little bit of secret sauce. You see, God knew life would be very hard for us ever since the fall in the garden in the book of Genesis. You see, there's always, always, guaranteed, there are always consequences when we disobey God's word, always. But know this, God is so good and God is so loving that he still, after our disobedience and rebellion, God still offers us peace and rest. Fact is, it's number four on the 10 commandments, number four. And what, what I find crazy what I find crazy about this fourth commandment, about keeping the Sabbath and keeping it holy, what I find crazy, what I've seen in my Christian walk so far, and I've been guilty of this too, is that Christians sometimes consider this more of a suggestion than a commandment. In fact, it's, it's crazy. Sometimes we even boast or brag about breaking it. I mean, how many times have we said to somebody, yeah, man, I just worked two doubles. I, I worked 70 hours in the last month every week. I've, I've worked 70 hours a week, man. I'm just chugging along. I'm, I'm making incredible money. This is great. Or you hear somebody say, yeah, well, I, I haven't taken a sick day in over two years, man. I'm at work every single day. And we, we, we wear it like a badge of honor, not even realizing we're not practicing what, what God has given us for, and it's for our own good. It's crazy. So let me ask a few questions. If you're that person, and you haven't been honoring the Sabbath, and I've been guilty of this, I just confess it now, and these questions are for me. But let me ask you some questions. So after working those 70 hours a week for a month or however long, how do you go home and treat your family? Oh, at work they praise you and they think it's amazing and it's awesome and, and you're giving and you're giving and you're giving and you're producing and you're producing and, and, and everybody thinks you're, you're incredible, but, but how do you go home and treat your family? How do you really feel? How does your body, how does your mind feel after working years in a row and not taking a day off? How do you really feel? How do you feel in that drive home? Do you, do you go home and, and hit the chair and you're done? Or how do you find peace? Or, or where do you find peace when you're putting all those, those hours in like, okay, so here's a test. Do this. At home, I want you to take your your cell phone or your device and, and give it, uh, kids, give it to your parents and, or, or husbands and wife. Give your phone to your, to your spouse and, and let them scroll through your history and see how you try and find peace. Or, or let me ask one more. So, so how do you find rest? Does, does it take a few drinks? Does it take a few pills? You can't sleep at night? Does it take a few scrolls, swipes on your phone? Fill in the blank. You see, God is so amazing that the reason he gave us the fourth commandment wasn't for his benefit, it's for yours. It's for my benefit because he loves us and he cares about us. And he knew what life would bring. And he knew how difficult life would be. And he knew that we would need rest. And he knew that we would need to abide in him. You see, before God gave Moses the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai to give to the Israels, God commanded way before that, 
God commanded man to rest and experience peace before he had to write it on a stone tablet. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2, the very beginning. And I'm going to read verses 2 and 3. And it says, On the seventh day God finished his work that he had done, and he rested. Now we can read right by that where it says he had rested, and we think, uh, well, he sat down, he relaxed, or, or whatever he needed to do. But, but in the original text, in the Hebrew text, that word rested is Shabbat, where we get Sabbath. And so it's, it's more than just sat down. Do you really think God needed to sit down? I think he knew we would need to sit down. And on the seventh day from all his work that he had done, so God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. That's very important. Because on it, God rested from all his work that all he had done in creation. Something tells me that God didn't need to rest but again, he knew we would. So this is what God did. In the book of Genesis, before he wrote it on the tablets, before Moses gave it to the Israelites, God gave it to Adam. And he set this pattern from the very beginning of creation. God sets a pattern of six days of work followed by a day of rest, and he blessed it and made it holy, holy. So then we go to the book of Exodus and, and we find the 10 commandments. And this is what he says about the fourth. Exodus 20, verses eight through 11. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. So not just remembering, but actually keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. The Sabbath to the Lord. Not the Sabbath to the TV or football game. Not the Sabbath to your golf game, but the Sabbath to the Lord. Because that's where true peace comes from. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son, your daughter, your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. But he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath and made it holy. I have three simple points, and they're in order. Three simple points to help us all experience the peace and the rest that God desires for us, that, that God set up for us. And so the first one is simple. Stop. 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 Check it or wreck it. Stop. When I wrote the check it part, this is, this, is, uh, this is what I thought of because I, I used to have this, this red Dodge truck that about every four to five months, this little tiny yellow light on my dash would go off. I think some of you may have experienced this and, and it looks like a little engine, that light. That light that brings terror and fear to every driver. <gasps> Check engine light. I, I always feel like my engine's gonna like blow out of my hood when that happens. And I remember the first time it happened, I'm, oh my, I, I gotta pull over, this thing's gonna break, it's gonna blow up. Everybody knows when the check engine light goes on, you gotta stop or you're gonna wreck it. And I remember finding out it was a simple little evaporator hose coming from the fuel. That's it. And the interesting thing is, I could never reach that little hose. And so what I did instead is I went out and bought this beautiful little tool at Walmart for $25 that you plug in 
and you reset the engine light. I know every mechanic, you're going crazy. You shouldn't do that. It's not the right thing. Go to your mechanic. Mechanics are awesome. They're the best. But I couldn't do it, and I wasn't going to pay all that money for a little hose, and it ran fine. And so every time I'm driving, it was like every time I'd get in about four months, I'm waiting for the light. There it goes. Check it. Well, sometimes that check engine light can, can mean something significant. And you better stop your automobile, like not enough oil in your engine or overheating or something serious. And if you don't check it, you will wreck it. And that's what we need to do with the Sabbath. We need to check ourselves. So this past year, we have been forced to stop. We were, we were grinding through, man. I'll never forget the day. I have the ability and the beautiful privilege to take my kids to school every day. I love doing it. I've done it ever since they started school. And I remember in March, we're having conversations here and we're watching the news and we're hearing about this COVID-19 and how it's spreading and, and, all, and, it, and it's becoming big time. And I remember taking my kids. I remember this like it was yesterday. It was March 13th. And they'll tell you this. I dropped them off and I said to both of them, you may want to empty your lockers today. I don't know if you're going to go back to school on Monday. And I was completely serious. And they kind of like didn't know what to think about it, whatever. And I remember over the weekend getting the email from Fleetwood saying, all classes are canceled. We're not meeting. Don't send your kids to school. All school. Everything stopped. And it was crazy because it was at a point where, where my kid, my, my son was starting track and Ava was in soccer and things were happening and practices and they were ending the school year and, and like spring's right around the corner and man, we're ready to go and I'm excited. And all of a sudden we're forced to hit the brakes, not just hit them, but slam on the brakes. And it was life, life stopped stopped. It was crazy. School buildings closed down. My wife's office building closed down. The church closed down. Pools closed down. Gyms closed down. It was crazy. We stopped going and doing in large part. But what's really interesting is we didn't stop to the point of feeling rested. In fact, the stopping made us feel restless. So the Sabbath isn't just about stopping. That's part of it. Because you can stop, but you can still feel restless. And that's what happened. We felt restless. The Sabbath is more than stopping. The Sabbath isn't the right or the ability to be lazy. That is not what God gave it to us for. It's more than stopping. It is keeping it holy. It is honoring God. Use an illustration, I thought about this, and this is just me being very transparent with you. Um, I, I look forward to vacations with my family. I love going on vacations with my family. Uh, I take my mom and my aunt sometimes. Uh, it's just a great, time, and, and I love vacations. But here's what I've found. Because I always have these expectations that, that when I go on vacation, I'm going to be able to unplug and just kind of rest my mind and my body and be with my family. And it's going to be beautiful. And I'm going to have what's called an Instagram vacation. You know, when you take like 40 pictures till you get it right and you post it and everybody thinks you're having it. But, but they don't see the 39 pictures before that where, where he, th this guy's miserable and, and you're miserable and, and it's raining. And, 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 but, but you keep going till you get the Instagram. And, and I think in my head, yes. Well, here's what happens to me. So we go on vacation and it takes me about two days to unplug from life, to, to, to not think, uh, about ministry, which is really, really hard. Think about the campus and what's going on there and is everything okay? And then, and then I think of at home what's happening there and, and responsibilities I have when I come home and I'm like, no, you gotta stop that. Come on, this is vacation. So about two days to do that. And then about two days before we come home, I start thinking about that. So I really get about three days to try to rest and relax and experience that. And so many times I've come home from vacation, maybe you've said this, 
Why don't you put in the chat some places you'd like to go on vacation this year? You missed it last year. So 2021, where would you like to go? Where do you want a vacation? Bermuda would be nice. That would be great. But then I start thinking, ah, I got to go back to work. And, and I come home from vacation and I feel exhausted. How many times have you come home from vacation thinking, I need a vacation from vacation? And I never experience the peace and the rest together. And sometimes it's disappointing. Here's the bottom line. I want you to know this. I want you to write it down. I want you to, to write it somewhere at home. I want you to type it in. I, I want you to remember this. The Sabbath isn't the absence of work. The Sabbath isn't the absence of work, but the presence of God in our rest. It's the presence of God in our rest. Because you can, you can rest your hands you can rest your body, but it's very hard sometimes to stop the mind, to stop the thinking, to, to stop that, that what's next, what I got to do this, I got to do that. And you never experience the peace and rest that God has intended for all of his creation. And so number one, stop, stop, stop working the 70 hours, stop working seven days a week every year. Stop the striving. There's no award in heaven that says you work five years in a row without a day off. There, there is no such thing. The second thing we need to do. So we've stopped. We've stopped. We've hit the brakes. Here's the second thing. Is we need to rest. Rest. It's what God said in, in, in Genesis 2. He Rested. He put man in the garden and rested him there. There's a difference between putting something there and resting it there. Rest is the second part of honoring the Sabbath. And, and here's what I don't mean by rest. I don't mean taking a nap, although naps are good. In fact, I can see in about three hours sofa ministry happening in my house for me. Naps are good. Naps are okay. Naps are good. But just because you've taken a nap doesn't mean you've rested your soul. It doesn't mean that. It means you've rested your body. So naps are okay. But when you rest and abide, rest and abide in God, when you focus on Jesus in that rest, when you open up your Bible, when you do a devotion, when you put on worship music and turn off the TV, when you put your entire focus on God and the goodness of God and the thankfulness of God and the grace and the mercy and the love of God, that something happens. You will experience peace. See, it's not just stopping, but it's resting and keeping it holy as God intended it when you focus on him and his goodness and we hear and we listen from God, that is what the Sabbath is. We need to rest in him. This was God's original intent. Look at verse 15 in the second chapter of Genesis. Verse 15, chapter two of Genesis, it says, the Lord God took the man and put him. The original Hebrew is nuek, which means he rested him. It's, it's like, just imagine taking something that's so important and you take it and you treat it with care and love and you rest it down. Not just put it down, you rest it. And that's what God did with Adam. He took him and he rested him in the garden. Now the garden is still perfect at this point. There are no rocks or thorns or thistle. Sin had not entered the world yet. God puts Adam in this perfect place and rested him there and says, now, abide in me, Adam. It's you and me. That's Sabbath. That's the Sabbath. It's not sitting on the couch watching football. That is not Sabbath. It's not saying, well, I'm not going to mow the grass today. I'm, I'm going to take the Sabbath. No, you don't have an understanding. If you, if you don't mow the grass, then spend time with the Lord. Keep it holy. 
That's why coming together, you taking the time this morning to click online and to watch us, that's important to God. I pray this morning you find peace and rest in Jesus this morning as he intended for us all. Bottom line, I want to say it again before we get to point three. Sabbath isn't the absence of work, but the presence of God in our rest. Invite God in now. Invite God into your family now. Invite God into your life now. Don't wait. What are you waiting for? And here's the third point. Stop, rest. Here's the third one. Abide. Be with. Fellowship. Abide in God's peace. Only the peace that passes understanding comes from Jesus it will not come from another person, another thing you buy, another drink. It will, it will comes from nowhere but Jesus. True peace comes from Jesus, the presence of Jesus in your life. When we stop working, when we stop striving, accomplishing, it doesn't mean being lazy. Whatever you want to call it, and we rest our minds and our bodies, it sets us up to abide in the only thing that gives true peace, Jesus Christ. That's it. I'm telling you, it's the only place you're gonna find it. God set the Sabbath up so perfectly from the very beginning, and we, me, have really messed it up. We have not kept it holy. We have not used it as what God intended it to be. We've treated it as a suggestion, as maybe, or if they give me off at work or whatever. How much money and how much time and how much energy have we spent chasing peace? Well, maybe that car, maybe that motorcycle, or maybe that new home, or, or fill in the blank. It won't give you peace. It'll give you another payment at the end of the month. There's only one thing, one thing, and his name is Jesus Christ. That's it. The whole time, the whole time we treat the Sabbath as a suggestion. Think about this. How many people do you know? And we've kind of been trained like this in America. We're trained to think if we spend 50 years breaking our back and working hard and saving our money, then, then we can retire in luxury and, and we can enjoy life. And I always thought, that doesn't make sense. Work hard 50 years, rob your family of good time, rob God of fellowship, and then maybe get 10 15, maybe 20 years of retirement. In that 50 years, you beat your body up, you beat your family up mentally because you're not giving them time, you're not there, and you think you're gonna restore it in the last 20 years? I think we've, we've got that backwards. What if, just what if? What if we start observing what God has given us now? What if we don't wait till we're 65 and we collect a social security paycheck, which probably won't be enough and you'll never find peace. That'll be more anxiety than you have now. So what if, what if we start observing what God's given us now in the Sabbath? As a pastor, you have a lot of conversations with people, a lot. Good, bad, troubling and one of the things I've experienced as a pastor is I've gotten to, sp to speak with a lot of people who knew their last days on earth were, were almost up. They were dying. And I have never once, never, have I heard somebody say, Pastor Eric, man, I just wish I would have worked one more year that company at that factory. I wish I would have worked one more weekend. 
I wish I would have missed one more of my kids' soccer games or musical. I, I wish I would have worked harder. I just didn't work hard enough. I've never heard that. But do you know what I've heard? I've heard people spay, say, Pastor Eric, tell my family I love them. I sure wish I would have spent more time with them. I've heard them say, I wish I spent less time at work. I've heard them say, I wish I would have laughed more. I've heard them say, I wish I would have forgiven quicker. I wish I would have loved others better. I wish I would have said sorry more. You know, it's amazing what God will speak to you when you stop, rest, and abide in him. It's amazing the things that you will hear the Holy Spirit speak to you and guide and direct you. I say this to people all the time because they're looking sometimes for pastors to kind of tell them what to do more than advice. Well, should I change? I say, listen, the only time I will ever tell you what to do is if you're breaking the law, stop it. And they're like, well, why? Why can't? Here's why. Because I am a firm believer that God still speaks loud and clear to his children. Are you taking the time? Are you observing Sabbath? Do you hear from God? Because he's still speaking. He's still speaking. And he's speaking truth. And he's speaking love. And he's speaking guidance. And he wants to speak a word to you this morning. What is that word? He is speaking to you this morning. What is it he is asking you to do specifically? He still speaks. I want to close with a story of Jesus and the Sabbath. It's interesting as you read the Gospels how Jesus was consistently followed around by the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the religious leaders. And, and they just followed him around trying to trip him up because they didn't believe he was the son of God and they believed he was speaking blasphemy and, and, and they were about the law, the law, the law, do this, don't do that. They didn't realize that he was the son of God come down in human form, that he was the way and the truth and the life. And so they're always trying to trip him up, especially about the Sabbath, the law. That's that person that says, today on Sunday, I'm going to sit down and do nothing. Well, you're missing out because that is not the Sabbath how God intended. So we find Jesus in Matthew 11. Now, I want to set this up so you have a better context and you can read it. But in Matthew 11, Jesus just gave some pretty harsh words to these cities that he had traveled through where they rejected his message and they, did, they didn't have repentant hearts. And so this, this chapter 11 in the beginning, it, it, the, the subtitles, woe to those cities. So he's given some harsh words. But he ends the chapter with these words, beautiful words. And these words still apply to you and I. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 to 30. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. I don't even have to take a guess about this. I know probably the majority of you watching this, hearing my voice, you feel weary and you have every right to. And you feel a burden. You may not have worked in months or weeks you don't know if you're going to work. You don't even know if you're going to have a job. And you feel weary and you feel the burden of life right now. These words are for you. So I'm going to read it. Put your name where it says, come to me, all you. Come to me. Put your name there. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. Jesus is inviting you. And if you do this, I will give you rest. That's a promise. This isn't, I might give you rest, or maybe uh, if you pray hard enough, maybe if you give enough, maybe if you fill in the blank. 
It says, I will. This is a promise that Jesus is giving you right now. No, all you have to do is come to him. Come to him. It's like a child coming to the parent when they know they have a need. Come, come, come. Jesus would take 99 steps, but you got to take that last one. Come. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart. You know, a yoke, you think of, of two oxen or two mule or two whatever. When they're yoked together, they walk in unison. One doesn't get ahead of the other and one doesn't do more work than the other. They, 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 they walk in this beautiful unison together. You and Jesus, yoked together. It's a beautiful place to be. But we strive and we go and we hurry. And Jesus is, we take the yoke off. I got to do this. I got to go. I got I to I gotta move, move, move. And Jesus is saying, no. For I am gentle and humble in heart. A little hard to find this year. Someone who's gentle and humble in heart. Jesus is and this is what will happen this is what will happen here's the promise again and lots of promises in these verses you will find rest not just rest you will find rest for your soul see we can sit down and we can stop but that doesn't mean you find rest in here that means your mind's still going 100 miles. You're disengaged from your family. You're disengaged. Jesus is saying, do you want that? I can give it to you. I can rest your soul and your, you got to rest your body, but I can rest your soul. And then he ends with this last sentence. For my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. What a beautiful promise from Jesus for you and for me. That's what we can experience in the Sabbath. And, and this is what happens right after this. Jesus goes with the disciples and he's walking through a field on the Sabbath. They arrest and these religious leaders are following him, just waiting for him to do something wrong. Disciples pick some grain and they start eating. And they're like, we got you. You can't do that. That is work on the Sabbath. And so Jesus corrects them with the Old Testament and talking about David. And, and they go on. And here's, here's the one I want to read. So they've already worked on the Sabbath and Jesus corrects them. And you know where they were going? They were going to church. They were going to church. It's the Sabbath. And I'm going to read exactly from Matthew 12. So that just happened. Matthew 12, starting at verse 9. They're going to show the, the main verse at the end. He went on from there and he entered the synagogue. Jesus went to church. And a man was there with a withered hand. Now something tells me this man in the synagogue with the withered hand I don't know, it's not in there, but I, I have a feeling he may have kept his hand like this. That was embarrassing. That was, we, we hide our, our flaws, don't we? We, we want to hide our issues so nobody can see it. We, we don't want to be judged. And, and so I just imagine this man kind of in the corner by himself and just kind of, you know, maybe nobody will notice. I'll just hide it here, you know, and, and, and they'll just come in and, and maybe something will happen today. I, I don't know, you know, I'm just, I'm just going to hang out here. We'll see. But, but listen to what happens. And the religious leaders and they said, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? I think this guy is 
It's not his first time there. I think they know who he is. It makes me wonder, you, you religious leaders have done nothing for him. You know him. You know he has a withered hand. And your question is, can you heal him on the Sabbath? You're missing it. You're totally missing it. You're worried about the law. You're worried about breaking the Sabbath. And I love what Jesus does. This is what Jesus said. Which one of you who has a sheep, if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will not take hold of it and lift it out? How much more value is a man than a sheep? So it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Imagine today, you have to go to the ER. I hope you don't, but people do. And it's Sunday. Imagine walking into the ER this morning and, and maybe you have your child and they, they hurt their arm or something. They need medical care. Imagine you walking in and the doctor saying, oh, no, 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 no. Come back tomorrow. It's the Sabbath. No, no, no. We, you, we can't do this today. I'm, no, no. That's not love. That's law. Jesus is love. And so look at what Jesus does. Then he said to the man, Jesus said to the man, stretch out your hand. Now, that's easy to, to read through. But this man has a crowd around him. The religious leaders hovering over Jesus, trying to trip him up and trick him. The disciples are there. Jesus is there, probably has people's attention. And Jesus is telling this man, show them. Show them your issue. Show them your problem. What would have happened if he didn't stretch out his hand? It's interesting. The only time Jesus couldn't do miracles was because of lack of faith. This man has faith. This man has faith. And it says, and the man stretched it out and it was restored healthy like the other. When you do what Jesus asked you to do, there are blessings. But here's the thing. You got to do it. You got to do it in faith. Sometimes it's going to be uncomfortable. Sometimes people are watching you. But when you do it in faith and you trust Jesus, there's restoration. There's restoration. There's peace. I bet that man went home staring at his hand all the way. It used to be, but now it's... Do you want to say that this morning? I, I used to be but now I'm, I'm going to practice the Sabbath today. I'm going to trust Jesus today. I'm going to stop and I'm going to rest and I'm going to abide in Jesus today. Watch what happens. Not just to you, but to those around you. We serve a God of restoration. We serve a God who wants you to experience simply peace you got to do what he asked you to do. He set up a pattern of Sabbath. He put it on the commandments. It's important, not for him, for us. Do you want the perfect combination today? Do you want peace and rest today? Stop, rest, abide in him. Abide in him. Now here's the thing. You can't abide in Jesus if you don't know him. If you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, you will never, never experience that peace. Not because he doesn't want you to, but because only that perfect peace is found in Jesus. Nothing else. I've tried it. Nothing else. Many have tried it. Nothing else. It's Jesus. And even though you're watching online and there's nobody here, you can receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior right now. 
in your footy pajamas, sitting by the fire, having cocoa. Because what he's looking for is a sincere heart that believes by faith that he is who he is. You can do that by clicking on your screen. We have a a fairly new way that's really cool because everybody texts. You can text follow to the number that's coming across your screen and someone's there waiting to give you instructions. There's a prayer. It's just awesome. We want to do everything we can do to help you start a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Then you can stop, rest, and abide in the Prince of Peace. I'm going to close in prayer. I hope you not only heard my voice, but I pray you hear the voice of the Holy Spirit now. God's going to challenge you with some tough stuff because you have not kept the Sabbath holy in a long time. The Sabbath is not for him, it's for you. It's for you. So let's pray. Let's open our hearts to what Jesus has for every one of us. Dear Jesus, I pray right now, first, for those that are listening to the Holy Spirit this morning and making the decision to make you Lord and Savior. God, I pray that they hit that link, that they hit that button, that they make that text and they start day one of the rest of their life with Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior right now. I pray if there's one right now unsure, you will make it crystal clear that this is the right decision right now. God, I pray for myself and the rest of us who have not kept the Sabbath holy, who we've treated it as a suggestion. God, help us to get back in tune, in touch, and in obedience with you. Help us to keep the Sabbath holy. And and Lord, we know that may be a different day for those who work different shifts. God, it's not about the day. It's about a day set aside for you. To hear from you, to abide in you. So God, help us as your creation, as your children, to keep the Sabbath holy this morning. God, you are a good and faithful God. We thank you for that. God, I pray for this coming new year. In just a few days, we start a new year. I pray, God, that your love and your grace and your mercy will saturate this county, this state, and the world, God. We desperately need more of you. So, God, have your way. Use us, Lord God. Use this church to make a difference, an impact for the gospel of Jesus Christ. God, give us direction. Give us wisdom. Give us discernment, God. Help us to make a difference for your kingdom. God, we love you. We praise you. And we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. May you be blessed this morning in Jesus' name. Thanks for joining us for our final week of our Simply Peace Sermon Series. This year is coming to an end, but we have a lot to reflect on and look forward to. Our prayer is that these messages about peace help you to remember all the moments you've seen God this past year and ready your heart for what's to come. If you missed any of the previous messages, you can always go back and watch on our website, app, or listen on our GT Church podcast. We've got a lot of things happening here at GT Church, and we don't want you to miss out on any of it. You can stay connected with GT Church all week long by following us on social media everywhere at GT Church Online. You can also download our GT Church app. It's a great resource, and you can find everything you need there. 
I hope you have a great rest of your week and we'll see you this Wednesday night for our Growing Together segment at 7 p.m. on Facebook and YouTube.